record on this computer. So now let's, so I, you know, first off, if make sure that you're like, you know, with, with bad weather, sorry, with bad weather, make sure you're in a safe place. You know, if you're not in a safe place, I'd rather you be in a safe place than in my classroom. So, you know, um, our, I, we just had a lightning strike that was super close to our house. I mean, if you're in your house, you're about as, as safe as you can be. Yep. I mean, yes. <laughs> but I'm saying like, uh, you know, if you're not somewhere inside, maybe you should be. Um, all right. So today's exercise is going to be about leap years. Now, we aren't going to have to use loops at all for this. Um, so hopefully you've had the chance to read up on, um, on Boolean expressions. If you haven't, you're going to have trouble solving it, but you, sh but Python's easy enough that you shouldn't have trouble following, uh, as we do the solutions. Well, I need to boot up idle on my computer because unlike all the other one exercises we are doing, this one is not going to be in your textbook. Let me go ahead and share my screen to demonstrate what I mean. Okay. Just had you. There you are, Zoom. Also, I want to take this moment to remind you that you need to be vaccinated. Uh, it is too late to get Moderna and Johnson and Johnson, but you still have eight. Sorry, Moderna and Pfizer, but you still have eight days to get Johnson and Johnson. Also, if you've only just received your Moderna or Pfizer vaccine, you uh, recently, then you have to have your second dose by October first. So otherwise I, I'm, I've heard there's going to be consequences, which seems fair because uh, vac vaccinations keep us all safe. Um, so you'll find the exercise under modules and under our Thursday exercise of blame, of blame Pope Gregory the 13th, um, who is responsible for this mess indirectly. I mean, it is who the Gregorian calendar is named after, but I'm not sure he's the one who sat down and came up with it. So, you know. Um, so um, this is adapted from a book by, I, by, by Professor Savage, um, who've written a number of, uh, he wrote this Java textbook, which I've used before, but Regardless, the point being is that, you know, nice thing about pro computer problems is that you can adapt them to any language. Um, goes over quite a bit. So what our assignment is for today is that we are going to write a program that given a string as an input, will test if the given string is a real date in the Gregorian calendar. So footnote about that, that is basically the calendar that you, that is used pretty much everywhere in civil manner, civil and non-religious matters. Anywhere you see BCE or CE, we are talking about the Gregorian calendar. Um, it was commissioned and instituted by Pope Gregory uh, the 13th, hence why we named the uh, assignment after him, uh, who, was the, who was the leader of the papacy and the Holy See from 1572 to 1585. Um, but a lot of countries did not adopt it for a while. Um, and you know, uh, it's not the only calendar in use, right? Uh, I mean, just speaking about about my personal experiences, uh, we you know we have the you know Jews have the Jewish calendar that that goes from uh, from Anno Mundi uh, to, and then there's other calendars out there um, for various other religions, which I'm not a member of, so I'm not going to speak about those. <laughs> But what I will, but if you want to talk about that in chat, you can. Uh, it is solar lunar. It is solar lunar, meaning that uh, the months are the months are are lunar, but the but the year is solar. Um, now, uh, the reason we talk about we have this Gregorian calendar is right. There were calendars beforehand. It's because we've got the Julian calendar that happened before the, uh, that was before then. Uh, which was proposed by Julius Caesar. Um, and 
that was a reform of the, and notice that there's a bit of a drift. 20, where basically we're, the Gregorian calendar is now 13 days ahead of the Julian calendar. The Julian calendar is still used by parts of the Eastern Orthodox Church and part of the Oriental Orthodoxy. So, um, so it had two types of years, a normal year of 365 days and a leap year of 366 days. It followed the uh, simple cycle of three normal years and one leap year, giving an average year of 365 and a quarter days wrong. Those are long. Now, this is, you're like, okay, this is, sounds exactly like what I thought a leap year was, right? So why did we change it? Uh, because the actual solar year is slightly shorter, which is 365 and, and a bit less than a quarter day long. Because wouldn't it be nice if it if, if uh, the day night cycle and uh, you know work you know directly matched up with the rotational cycle uh, of, of the Earth rotating around the sun? Uh, it doesn't quite exactly, right? It doesn't line up quite exactly. So what we so adjustments had to be made to the calendar. Hence the Gregorian calendar. This is why you see figures such as George Washington. Uh, talk if you try to do dates with George Washington involved here. Um, notice that it has a footnote on his birthday. Contemporaneous records use the old style Ju Julian calendar enunciation style of enumerating years, recording his birthday as February eleventh, nineteen seven. Uh, sorry, seventeen thirty one. February 22nd, 1732. So um, point being is that basically before everybody kind of agreed on, uh, on time, it was kind of a mess and it's still a bit of a mess. Uh, for instance, uh, take uh, time zones are kind of a madness. And I link, and I, I think I linked to a video on that at the bottom. Uh, yeah, from Tim Scott on computer file, explaining the madness of time zones, right? Um, for instance, countries just make them up as need be. So all of China's on the same time zone, even though it's a giant country. Um, so that can be that. How do you submit activity for the day? Uh, you will submit it in a Dropbox. You'll upload it onto here. You do not need to demo it though, right? So to submit it, you just upload it into, to the, into this. Okay, so now let's talk about uh, what Gregorian get, uh, calendar dates are. So first off, dates in the US are dumb uh, because we do it month, day, year, 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 which doesn't really make sense, I think, because it's middle amount, smallest amount, biggest amount, you know, or biggest like time unit. Other countries do year, year, month, month, day, day. But, but in the US, we do month, month, day, day, year, year. So that's what we're going to do right now. So we're going to assume, by the way, that if we get a, that if the user enters in a digit, you know, for instance, take, take my birthday. Uh, if the user enters in uh, my birthday, which is April 6, 1987, we will, they will enter in 04, 06, 1987 with the zero, make sense? Okay, uh, val so we're gonna take in values for the months. Valid months are in the range of one through 12 inclusive, right? Make sense? Um, September, or April, June, November each have 30 days. Every other month, but February has 31 days which has 28 days except on a leap year, right? This is the stuff that you did little rhymes for uh, in class, that, you know, in elementary school and kindergarten and the like. So February has 28 days except for leap year where it has 29. So leap years are not as easy as we think as I've been hitting, uh, hinting at. A, leap, a year that's not divisible by four is a normal year, right? This is what, 2021? Yes, it's 2021. My God, this year stinks. And last year as well. Okay, so 2021 
uh, is not uh, is not divisible by four, so it is a normal year. 2020 was a leap year. So we got an extra day of horribleness in that year uh, because 2020 wasn't bad enough. Um, so every so every day of the year divisible by four is a leap year, except uh, leap year is divisible by 100 is not a leap year. So a leap year, oh yes, this is all if statements all the way down. A year divisible by four is a leap year, except that if it's divisible by 100, it is not a leap year. So 1700, as somebody uh, mentioned in the chat, is not a leap year. So it's if it's divisible by, it's gotta be divisible by four, by, but not divisible by 100. So 1700 is, is not a leap year. Sorry, 1700 is not a leap year. 1800 is not a leap year. 1900 is not a leap year. And 2100 is not going to be a leap year. However, two th the year 2000 was a special case. Any year divisible by 400 is a leap year. So a year is a leap year if it's divisible by four, but not divisible, except if it's divisible by 100, unless it's divisible by 400. And that's why they just simply generalize this, because you probably aren't going to be alive for the next exception. Unless you manage to live about a uh, year 400 is a leap year. It's divisible by 400. So again, 1996, leap, leap year, 1997, not, 1998, not, 1999, not, 19, oh, sorry, 2000 is, 2004 is, 100, year 100 is not a leap year, year 200 is not a leap year, year 300 is not a leap year, year 400 is a leap year. Yes, it's confusing. So here's some examples. 16, uh, 1644 is leap year, 1645 is not. 1600 is a leap year, 1700 is not. So give me one second to turn my light back on. So now you know why pe people basically say the old Julian rule because it makes it easy. Why, why? Because, because this is madness, that's why. Nothing makes sense, time is made up. <laughs> All right, so um, let's look at the Gregorian calendar. What it is is that basically, um, if we did not have, well, think about what would happen if we did not have leap years, right? Why do we have leap years to begin with? Or in the case of the Jewish calendar, a leap month. Why do we have such things to begin with. That's pretty much it. But yeah, Wikipedia says, calendar year needs to be synchronized with the astronomical year. So that's the physical kind of measurement we can do scientifically about the earth going around the sun. And the seasonal year, meaning that our seasons, we'd, since it's going around the sun at the same time, we'd like it to, you know, we'd like summer to actually feel like summer. Otherwise, we're going to get adrift because, like we said, um, like we saw in when we in the in the in the um, in the Julian calendar. In the Julian calendar article, we hear the actual solar year is that is that it's 365.24 days long. And so, yeah, it would be just coming up everywhere. It basically, we'd get adrift, and everything, and basically, all the seasons would just simply—they'd shift around, and we'd be fine. There's not like 
that, you know, us keeping time isn't affecting the universe. It's just affecting our sanity and what we expect. So, um, so that's pretty much why. Um, so, yeah, although the new calendar was much simpler, it was, there, there were issues with basically stuff with, with, with timing. And so the Gr Gregorian calendar got, um, uh, got adopted and replaced, and replaced everything. So, oh, wait, here, 2021 in various calendars, tons of calendars. Okay. Yep, here we go. The leap year rule is from the US Naval Observatory is every year that is exactly divisible by uh, four is a leap year, except for years divisible by 100. But these centennial years, years are leap years if they're divisible by 400. For example, the years 1700, 1800, 1900 are not leap years, but the years 1600 and 2000 are. So this helps adjust that, uh, fix it out uh, a bit more. Okay. So, um, so how in the world do we code this? I've got some hints over here, but let's just think about this. We can pretty much all we're, our only job is to validate whether something whether something is correct or not, whether a date is correct or not. So, um, first off, I'm going to leave, leave leap years for much late for the last part of the assignment, right? Because and why can I do that? Because Leap years only matter for checking if a date is correct, if it's February, right? Oh yeah, this is due today. We're doing it in class. I mean, it's due as much as any other project is due today. So, um, so we're gonna do this in class and I'm gonna walk you through it. So this is just a normal in-class exercise. It's just an old assignment I used to do, but I'm gonna walk you through it. So. First thing we want to do is take in a string from the user and then split it up into the three values we need, the month, the day, and the year. Make sense? Yeah. So first off, don't worry about the leap years, right? I put spent a lot of time talking about that, but we need to step back from the panic feeling that we're feeling and think, what the heck can I do? Oh, I only have to worry about leap years if it's February. So I'll leave that last, right? Let's think about that then. Let's arrange my, my line of thinking around being lazy like that, okay? So first things I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take in the input from the user. Month, day, and year, okay? And then I'll split it up. How do I split it up? All right, I can just slice it apart. We're using the slice operation. And then I can convert those to integers and then I can then I can independently check if they're valid. All right, if I get a year, there's no rules about what year it can be, right? 9,273 is a valid year. It's a year in the future, but that doesn't stop it from being a valid year, okay? Split is okay. Split is okay if you know how to use it. You could. Um, valid months and then, Okay, we'll check. So we'll automatically be able to assume that the year is valid. What about the month? Well, that's easy enough. If it's not one of the valid months, we can, it's gonna be invalid. Great. And then I can just basically do it by categories. I can say, okay, if it's one of these months, September, April, June, and November, I can check if the days are in range. If it's all the other months by February, I can check if it's 31. And then if it's February, I'll check if it's third, if it's, if it's, uh, you know, between one and 28. And in fact, I only have to worry about if it being a valid date during the leap year. I don't have to worry about it being a leap year if it's specifically one day and one day only. If it's February 29th, that's the only time I need to panic, right? So, We'll just take that aside and put it aside. So let's go ahead and work on getting our input. So, right, that's gonna look something like this. 
right? Remember how to do input, which is entry is equal to input. Please enter a date. And I'll copy paste this part into the chat, by the way. And then we're going to need three variables. Uh, I want those three variables, which are specifically the day, month, and year. Oh, yes. Thank you for that catch, Ezra. Let's go ahead. And I'm going to drop this on my desk top, which it, and I'm going to just call it blame. All right. So furthermore, so what I want to do is I want to take this and I'll go ahead and move the reorganize this month, day, year. I want to take this and I want to put the month value in here, the day value in here and the year in, in year. Why not integer input? Great, idea, uh, great suggestion, Gabe. But the reason I'm doing it is because they're going to enter it with a string with the slashes. So that's not going to work for integer. What we're going to do is that we're going to take this and then what you should do is that you should split it and store an int in each of these three things. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and split you up briefly for five, for let's say two, two to three minutes, for about five minutes to do this. First off, check your chat, everybody. I just simply dropped it in there. And yes, Jacob, that is correct. What you're going to want to do is kind of do this, which is month is equal to int entry. And then whatever the slice you need to be is going to be in there. So let me go ahead and drop you all, uh, drop you all, yeet you all into breakout rooms for about five minutes. Going to create, um, Let's go ahead and do 35 breakout rooms and assign it automatically. Good luck, everyone. And just this part, this is the only part you need to focus on. We'll do the month. Right now, we're just doing the splitting the entry up, okay?
All right, I'm just waiting for everybody to come back. And let me share my screen again. All right. So the answer here was to do slices correctly, which was um, what we were going to do is that we were going to take. So what were I, so when you're just starting out and you have trouble counting indices, it's easy to just put a comment and then just like type up what the indices should are where the indices are supposed to be. So those are the indices of the string that, that will be submitted to us, right? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, so what I'm going to want to do for my, um, for the first, for the month is I need to get all the, um, I need to get all the parts of the string that are zero, that are um, at index zero and one. So I need to go to, so with the slice notation, which is the colon, I need to go and start at zero up to, but not including two, right? The slice notation is start up to, but not including two. And you can totally leave out the zero here. If you leave it out at, if you leave the left side out, it's implied that you're starting at zero. Okay. The next part is. Wouldn't it be not including three? I don't understand. Not including two. We wanted to get we want to get indexes, indices zero and one. Zero and one. So we want to go up to but not include two. Oh, oh, I see, I see, I see, I see. Yep. So here, what is our slice going to be? Well, for day, we want to do indexes three and four, which means going up to, so starting at three, going up to and not including five. Three, up to, but not including five. Now, why this notation? It's just simply because the way everything works, but it also makes subtraction, uh, figuring out how long slices are really easy, which is that I can just simply subtract uh, five and three, and I'll end up with two. So I know it's too long, that this amount is too long. So this will go indices three and four. And year will just simply be from index six onwards. Entry six onwards. And so there. And the reason I surround it by int is I want to go ahead and convert these into integers. All right. So let me go ahead and drop what I have in chat. Actually, not quite yet. So now what's our next step on this horrific journey into calendars and time? So valid months are in the range one through 12, okay? So, and then basically what we've got is, is if we read on, we could just program it in, but if we read on, we can really just categorize our months into different categories based on how many days they have. September, April, June, and November can go into one category. 
uh, all the 31 day months can go into another category. February is its own category. And then anything that's wrong is its own category. So let's see what that kind of outline looks like. For instance, I could say, um, for instance, if, um, month equal equals, so what is, so what are we, so basically we can say if month, sorry, that makes it easier. If month is September, so if month is equal to nine, and what I'm going to write here is I'm going to write pass. What pass means is that yes, this block is going to have is indented and there's nothing in here yet, but please pass over it and leave it for later. I, I it, it is just simply I I am just still in the process of writing my code, and then we can use other conditions to figure this out. Now I could say if if X is between one and 12, but I want to go ahead and categorize this. So here I want to put together all of the months that are that are 31 that each have 30 days. So what are the months that have 30 days? September, June, April, and November. So let's start with the first one, which would be April. So it's month equal to four or month equal to six which is June, okay? So if it's April or if it's June. Now a common mistake that I, that, um, that, that um, can happen is that you, that you think, um, this, so this is a common thing I see by the way with some students where they go if month equals four or six or nine or, 11, right? And that looks like it should be, okay, if the month is April, June, September, or November, and they think that should work. Um, however, um, I, I do need to show you what that that is, that that does something that you don't realize what it's doing, which is, um, well, let's just look at four or six. Is four. There are multiple ways to condense this, and I will show you. And I'll and I'll show you after after you do it the long way. Four or six gives you four. Okay. Six or four gives me six. Okay. Uh, or equal to four or six. True. Five equal to four or six, huh, that doesn't do what you expect, right? Sneha, yes, that is correct. I will go over that. So doing it like this has its, you see everything in Python is, has a truthy value or a falsy value. Basically, if it's if it's a positive, if it's a non-zero value, it is true. And if it's a non-zero, and if it's a zero value, it's false. So this kind of does operations that we're not really expecting. So what you have to do is you have to be explicit. If month is equal to four, or month is equal to six, or month is equal to nine, or month is equal to 11. The or statement just takes, is greedy. It takes what is the truthiest, the first truthy thing it finds, which in this case was four. So if month is four or six or nine or 11, Great. Then it's a third. Then it has thirty days.
31 day moths. What does elif mean? Excellent question. Elif means else if. Um, so is that kind of like the wrong answer then? It's basically saying if it's not, okay, if it's not the above, now check this. Okay, if it's not the thing above that, check this. It's gotcha. a way of nesting. Otherwise, we would have to nest if statements, and they would get very, very, very confusing very quick. Basically, um, it's useful when there's only one correct answer. I do an exercise. I think I do a video where I show what would happen if we use. It depends on whether the if statements are independent or or not independent. So if there's if basically one of the th if you're checking a thing that can belong to multiple categories then you just want to use ifs. If things can only fall into one category, then you want to use else if. Because it will if fall it only into falls into, like if there can only be one right answer, can't you just say like, so say like there's only one correct month. Like if month equals four, then pass. Uh, if not, then fail. Well, pass isn't, pass doesn't do what you think you're doing. What pass does is just, it's a placeholder. Oh, oh I thought that meant that like, you, you would uh, be able, like it would be a correct entry, like how are the, what this uh, project is oh. for. So So give me a second to finish writing this code this filler code this this for you to fill out And there we go Now I'll take this and it is now dropped in chat. So now go ahead and do your best to complete 30, uh, what you need for 31 and for 31 day months and for February. So I'll go ahead and throw you into breakout rooms for a couple more minutes again, recreate. Recreate, meet new people, make new friends, go.
No, it would not. So that is a good question. So now that we're all back, uh, Ezra asked, wouldn't it be an issue if you put in 04 instead of four? Um, and the answer is not really, no. We, if we take the uh, if we take zero and four and throw it into an integer, it behaves exactly as you'd want it to. Mm -hmm. So, um, although be warned that basically zero x is that basically o four four, right? It says leading zeros in decimal in literals are not permissions. Use a zero o for octal integers. So there are, it's, which gives you into an interesting thing, right? You can't enter zeros for four. No worries, uh, Sammy, you'll wanna follow the code as we're doing it. So what we can do is, so now what we have here, let's go ahead and fill this out. So first off, this is the category for February. So I'm just gonna put if month equal equals two, great. And now what I'm gonna do over here is I'm gonna put else if, so all the other 30 day, months that have 31 days. So if month equal equal um, one or, so February is accounted for, so three, Four month is equal to four is above me, five, six is above me, so seven and eight. <clears throat> you can't necessarily do if month is not equal to two because think about what would happen if you had 13. It would be it would be counted as true. That's why we have very explicit categories here. You wanna make sure that your categories are edging out exactly what you want them to edge out and including exactly what you want them to include. So for instance, uh, I think the question was, is that if I put, what if the, else if month not equal to two, well then, Anything that was an invalid month would get counted in this category, that, if that makes sense. Uh, can people see, by the way, still, or did my thingy crash at this point? No, it's all good. Nope, it's crashing now. At least my chat is. Oh. So, okay, I'm going to go and open Task Manager, and I'm going to murder Zoom again, and, and I've reconnected. Okay. So let me reopen the chat. Okay. And I could ask if it's less than 12. Yeah, you could modify this. There are a lot of ways to do this, but I was just trying to say, you gotta be careful not to edge yet to include something you don't mean to include. So here I'm just being the most explicit and most straightforward. Or if month is 10 or 12. But there is an easier way to do this, which is yes, you can just do the and and if in an if in statement. So the simpler way to do this is say if month in, and this is one of those powerful keywords in Python that I love with Python, one, three, uh, and make a list of all the months that um, are these months in questions. One, three, seven, eight, tw um, 10, and 12. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12 represented. So, um, and similarly, we could just do four, six, nine, and 11 up here.
which is great because uh, if you're working Python, you couldn't do this and you'd have to do it the other way, which is a lot longer. Okay. So let's go ahead. And so this basically is this code not only categorizes us and sets us up for the correct number of days, but it also rules out the number of months, uh, sorry, the, the value of the month, which is great. So let's take a look at, um, at what we're doing with, um, with, uh, with the days, okay? So here, what we'd wanna do is basically check, okay, is the day a valid a month? Are there 30, is the day between one and 30 in here? Is it between 30, uh, one and 31 in here? And here, I'd wanna check if it's between one and 28. And then if it's above 30, right? And then I'd have want to have one more condition, which basically said, hey, um, and notice I delete the pass here. If day equal equal 29 panic. So Let's go ahead and go back to the breakout rooms one more time and fill out these before we start working on the leap year. Make sense? So we're gonna work on the days, the months, and here, let me pass what I have to you to make sure that you've got something. So here, what you wanna do now is ask basically, okay, if it's between 30 months, Sorry, if it's between 30 days, it's valid. Otherwise, it's invalid. If it's between 30, if it's between one and 31 days, it's valid. Otherwise, it's invalid. And then finally, here we want to make sure it's between one and 28. Otherwise, it's invalid unless it's a leap year, in which case we'll we'll handle that when we come back next. Okay. So again, the, with the breakout rooms. more breakout rooms recreate again shuffle open
a professor. Yes. What do you do when your group doesn't talk? Oh, this is well, this isn't my group. You should have been scheduled in to go into another yeah, group. Yeah, I, I was, but like no one's talking <laughs> in that group. Then be the one to talk. I, I'll, I, I did start, but no one is like nothing. There's no reply. But. That's okay. It's hard in, in an online environment. The point is to give you a chance to work on it, but is to get give you a chance to work on it briefly. Right. In some groups, they, they work together like that. Others, not so much. All right, let's bring people back. Okay, so let's go ahead and finish this up in the remaining time we have. So one of the things I love about Python is I can write a statement, if statements that make sense. In other languages, I'd have to do this. If day is less than um, one or day is greater than 31, Or sorry, greater than since these are the days with 30. Print day is invalid else. Print day is valid. So the, on the other hand, because in Python, because Python is awesome, I can just simply do this. Um, I can also flip it around like this and it makes more sense. Mm hmm And yeah, there's there's multiple ways to do this. It's logic. So you can flip that logic as much as you want. 
Yeah, you totally could do that as well. You could probably, I hadn't thought about it. You should probably, you could probably use range. Let's see. Let's test it out with range statement. And that's what I love about having this, about Python is I can just test out stuff. Yep, makes sense. I mean, and Python tries to basically be as li little surprising as possible, as least surprising as possible. So now for February, what are we going to do? For February, what I'm going to do is say, I'm going to go ahead and copy this part because that's really easy. If it's between in February, it's valid if it's, it doesn't matter if it's leap year or not, right? One through 28, it's a valid day, no matter what. 20, uh, so it's 29, we, we get there in just a second, we don't know. Okay. Else, uh, Okay, so at this point though, I'd probably want to write a function because otherwise my code is going to get very, very nested. So let's go ahead and take in, a, let's go ahead and write a function over here to handle uh, leap years. That given a year is going to just check if something is a leap year or not, okay? So we're going to write a function and we can just call it. The so function is leap year. And when you see is in front of a function, generally you know it's going to return true or false. I'm going to give it a variable to pass in. I'm going to say we because we're going to want to pass in a year. Def is leap year. So remember this defines a function, defines a new procedure, it defines a new operation. We are adding a new verb to the language called is leap year. So I've defined a new verb, a new thing I can use. It's called is leap year. And I've stated that to anybody who's going to be using this function, you got to give me the year. Right? Just in case you haven't, you're behind and we got to do that. So first thing, let's check. Let's check if year is divisible by four. That's an easy way to tell if it's a leap year or not, right? At the very least, it's an easy way to tell if it's not a leap year, right? So if year... Oh, because I totally thought I put it in and did not. Was busy typing and talking at the same time, which is uh, perilous. So if year mod four equal equals zero, that says if the year is divisible by four, that's what this means, right? If year divided by four has a remainder of zero. Make sense? That's remember, that's how the modulo operator works. If the year, if I divide the year by four and get, get the remainder, and the remainder is equal to zero, then it's possibly a leap year, probably a leap year. But if it's not, I'm going to return false. That's going to end that function and that end this new verb. And give the answer back to the to to wherever I called it. Okay. So if it is divisible by four, right? Let's think about this now. Okay. If it's divisible by four, uh, let's check if it's divisible by one hundred, right? If here is. So if it's divisible by four, I'm in this step. So I can nest these if statements pretty well. And that actually is useful over here to keep it kind of clean, at least for writing sake, it's gonna look pretty obvious, uh, ugly. Yes, I could make it into, into one, but like writing it out like this, rather than trying to figure out one statement is easier. 
trying to figure it. And once I figure it out, maybe as a bunch of statements, then I can, can try to condense it into one. Make sense? Yeah, I was thinking if, you know, you put 400, they're both, you know, leap years. So then you could print, you know, it's a leap year. If it's visible by four, if it's visible by 400, it's definitely a leap year. Right, right. So here though, I'm just work. So that's one way to do it. I could then ask if it's visible by 400. So if it's visible by four, if it's also divisible by 400, I could say, yeah, that's totally true. Divisible by 400 is definitely going to be a leap year. Okay. Well, if it's not divisible by 400. Well, what if it's divisible by 100? If year, yeah, if year divisible by 400 equals zero and year divisible by 100 is equal to zero. So if it's divisible by 400, then yes, it's a leap year. If it's divisible by 100 and it's divisible by four, return false. So, Um, the answer for the, um, so somebody, so somebody wrote, if you could do year divisible by four or is not equal to zero or year divisible by 100 is equal to zero and year. That's right. I wrote that for, um, I strictly wrote that for uh, non-leap years. I use the ah. and function to include it. Yeah, I, my bad. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yes. Yeah, sorry. I, I, I can totally do this. I can totally leave this out because of the truthiness, right? Um, except that if years divisible by 400, so this would, if it's a, well, I can't really leave it out. I can leave it out if I'm looking for a non-equal. So it has to do with what, be, be, but you have to remember the falsy values as well. I believe zero is default falsy, not truthy. So um, let's go ahead and test this, by the way before we move on. Comment everything out that I've done, just so that I can test it down here. Print is leap year uh, 2016, 2015, 2000, 1900. That should be true, false, true, false. Please work, please work, please work. Yay, okay, so it's working. So if it's divisible by 400, if it's divisible by four, it's probably a leap year. It's definitely a leap year if it's, uh, if it's divisible by 400, definitely divisible if it's divisible by 400, but not divisible by 100, right? Because these are independent, these are interdependent clauses. They're not independent of each other. Now, why do I use the print? Why can't, so, I can't use the print function here. Oh, why did I uh, use the print over here? Because otherwise it wouldn't do anything. Yes, I'll be sharing the code afterwards. And finally, 
So now we can just simply put, rather than trying to make it really a lot of code in here, I can say, if day is equal to 25 and is leap year, Here, print. Actually, I can be. Yep, I can be a bit more explicit. Even uh, print. Yeah, print day is valid. And then I'll be a bit more explicit and a bit more cheeky. Yes. And technically, these should be L ifs. If day is 29 and not is not leap year, day is invalid. Oh, sorry. The day is not invalid. Year is not leap year. And so let's go ahead and run it. O four, comma fifteen, so fourteen, nineteen hundred. Day is valid. And now let's go ahead and do um, let's run it one more time and test it on one, sorry, O one, sorry, O two twenty nine, uh, 1900. Here's now leap year. Great. All right, so I'm going to just drop this code in the chat again, except my thingy is frozen, I'm sure. Stop share or not. Give me one second. I can do one better. I can share the file. Ah, man, I am just doing great closing chat windows and stuff. So how do you know when to use an else if or else? So we use else when we have a default statement that's going on. When you, else is always the deep and anything else in defaults. I just sent the Python file for you guys. Um, so there you can download the, pi, pi, uh, the file for yourself. So you use yeah think or else so um if so the so basically if this then do this else do this i just sent it in chat i can send the um i open it up i'll i can also just send it like this in chat or not because it's not letting me copy for some reason Copy, clipboard, or is it too big? What is going on here? Is everybody able to see the file in the chat? Yeah, I already, I already saved it to my, to my folder. All right. Thank so, you. If you don't see it, go into chat. Here's the function. Otherwise, here it's in the function. And here is the rest of the code. So there you go. Otherwise, it's 321, so class is dismissed. Thank you so much.